Hello everybody, my name is Juliette Bay and I'm a physical therapist assistant at Rehab Associates. Uh, we have physical therapy clinics here in the Newark area, also one in Dresden and soon to be up and running a new branch in the Zanesville location. So at Rehab Associates, we treat several ailments from joint replacements, physical therapy after joint replacements to pre-surgery, post-surgery, shoulder issues, low back pain, general deconditioning. So an array of diagnoses um, at our clinic, we certainly treat um, with our great team of therapists. So if you're in need of services, um, if you're having balance issues, frequent falls, or just overall pain or pain in a specific joint or musculoskeletal region, um, you certainly can call our office, contact us, and we can get you in for physical therapy. Um, so I visit here at the Licking County Aging Program and do these uh, monthly uh, filmings in various topics. So I have discussed chair exercises, postural strengthening, balance and proprioceptive training. So today is more of a discussion based topic and we're going to talk about sleep and how sleep affects your overall health. Okay, so as a physical therapist assistant, again, I see people all the time who have, um, are rehabilitating from a joint replacement or they've had some sort of issue that they're coming and seeing us for. And a common complaint that we see, especially after the joint replacements, is impaired sleep. And they just can't find a comfortable position. They're having a difficult time sleeping. They're exhausted. And in case you don't know, sleep and adequate rest is a huge component to the healing process. So we as physical therapists and physical therapist assistants and all of their medical team try to find ways that they can get adequate rest and sleep so that they heal better. Okay, so um, it's important for you to know that sleep is a huge part of your healing process, a huge component of your health and your overall health. And how can you make changes to make sure that you get adequate rest during the night or during the day, whenever it is that you find that you're having to play catch up. So the, the reason that we really need to target this because sleep disruptions and not getting adequate rest can significantly affect your health from increasing your blood pressure, increase, increasing your heart rate, increasing inflammation throughout your body, um, not allowing you to heal appropriately. It can cause chronic fatigue, confusion, and several other ailments. So it's important for you to figure out what you need to do to get adequate rest. Going back to inflammation, studies are showing that if you don't get six or more hours of sleep per night, that it significantly increases the inflammatory response in your body. So obviously if you've already got issues going on, um, it's important that you figure out how to combat that to get yourself the adequate rest that your body needs. So how can we rest better? Obviously this is something that differs from individual to individual, but there are some similar components that you can try that we're pretty confident can help with getting you the adequate rest that you need. First, assess your mattress and pillow. So if you're a married individual, this can also be, um, obviously can be an issue because while one person might prefer a soft mattress, the other might prefer a more firm or hard mattress. So that's an important thing for you to figure out. Um, mattresses do not last forever. They're like anything. They are made to break down, so you have to go and replace those. Depending on the quality of the mattress, that will be a different time frame for person to person. But making sure that you find a mattress that is conducive for you and allows you to sleep and provide your body with um, adequate stability. So best, basically the best uh, suggestion for that is to go to a place when you're doing that shopping and lay down. They always have the examples there or the samples that you can lay down and assess that and see what fits your body better. So getting yourself a good, firm, hard, soft mattress, whatever feels better to you and keeping it up to date and up to par is an important part of your rest. So let's talk about the pillows. Obviously you can go to you know, a basic store and get anywhere from a $5 pillow to they make really fancy specialized pillows for $100 or more. So I have had patients in the past, especially my chronic neck pain patients or people that have 
um, postural weakness and just issues with that, um, that swear by certain pillows, my pillow and certain brands that might work best for them. So that is again, something that you can kind of experiment with and see if you're able to do just a general pillow if you need something more specialized for you. I will tell you pillow positioning is important. So sometimes with my chronic neck patients, chronic neck pain patients rather, um, a common mistake that I see that they do is doubling up pillows or having multiple pillows under their neck. Okay, so ideally we want you to keep your head and neck in a neutral position with the rest of your spine. So imagine if you're laying back on your bed, and I don't have a bed here to demo that, so my apologies. But if you're laying back on your bed, we would like your head to be in a neutral positioning. Think of what happens to my neck if I'm using multiple pillows, which sounds super comfy and a, a good thing to do at night. However, think of my neck positioning if I do multiple pillows. It's going to pull me into this position, okay? We see that as an ailment all the time with our chronic neck patients. Usually when we interview them and talk to them about their sleep positioning, multiple pillows sometimes is a common denominator with that. So make sure that you're getting a, maybe a higher quality pillow and something that's a little bit more flat and keeps your head in a neutral position. Avoid multiple pillows or anything that puts your head in this position, okay? Your neck is not made to be aligned that way. And so if you are using multiple pillows, increase your neck pain, which oftentimes can lead to headaches, that's going to impair your sleep. So you might sleep better if you're not having that neck pain. Another thing that you can do, stick to a sleep schedule, okay? Um, that's another common thing that I hear. Doesn't tend to be in our more mature populations, but sometimes with the younger group and so forth, you know, maybe they work third shift. Maybe they um, work during the day, so they like to stay up at night and do gaming type situations or be on their computers or just watching TV. Or maybe you yourself are kind of catching naps throughout the day and it's making you sleeping steadily through the evening a challenge. So find a schedule that works for you. Try to find a common time um, that you go to sleep each night, whether that be eight o'clock or 10 o'clock. So try to find a schedule and kind of stick to that, okay? So if you're having outings in the evening and getting home late and then trying to catch up on sleep and get up in the morning, and go to work the next day, that can obviously pose a significant challenge and it's going to impair your sleeping habits, which in turn could cause chronic pain, heart rate issues, cardiovascular issues, et cetera. You need to think of sleep just like healthy diet, adequate exercise, proper nutrition, hydration. It's right in there. It's one of those important components that you need to get a grip on. Next is practice a relaxing bedtime ritual. So what is that for you? Maybe it's reading a book. Maybe it's listening to opera music or jazz music. Maybe it's watching your favorite uh, program. Um, whatever it is, maybe it's having a glass of wine or listening to something via candlelight. What is it that you find relaxing and that you enjoy and adequately brings you down and allows your mind and your body to rest so that you can catch adequate sleep? So find that ritual realize its importance and implement it into your evenings. Um, next, make your bedroom conducive for sleeping. Okay, so some things that we suggest are a comfortable bed, obviously, a dark atmosphere. Okay, so if you're falling asleep with the light on and the TV on, that most certainly for me personally would wake me up throughout the evening. So make sure that your environment, your bedroom is conducive for sleeping. Proper temperature. Most people think toasty and warm is the best way to catch a good night's sleep. It's actually, studies are showing that decreasing the temperature and having a bit of chill um, can actually like relax your body and allow for better rest. But again, it's a personal thing. So what temperature is it that you find relaxes you? Low noise. Again, if you're having a blaring TV or your headphones in or you're leaving your computer on, or you're on the phone every evening. You know, I have friends, my children are now grown for the most part, but when my children are younger and they started to get in that cell phone age, um, my friends and I would often talk about, you know, taking the phone away at a certain time of evening so that our children would rest and be ready for the next uh, day at school because 
Obviously, it's easy to get into bad habits. It's easy to want to do something fun, and sometimes it's hard to allow our bodies and our minds to relax and get the sleep we need. So again, make your bedroom conducive for sleep. Avoid alcohol, cigarettes, caffeine, and heavy meals in the evening. Okay, so caffeine is a stimulant. So obviously, it's going to elevate your heart rate, your breathing rate, and overall, probably your mind activity. So by eliminating that, maybe you tell yourself you're going to eliminate caffeine altogether, or maybe you're not going to have it after 3 or 4 p.m. so that your body is able to come off of that stimulant. Um, alcohol, cigarettes, all of that can fluctuate heart rate, breathing rate, and your overall vitals, making sleeping difficult. Eating heavy meals, you know, your body has to kick in into that digestive process, which again, can make it difficult for you to relax. So you need to be mindful of what you're taking into your body. Your body's a temple, treat it right. Um, and exercise is great to help prep for sleep, okay? So maybe do, obviously if you're going out and doing high intensity exercise and then trying to unwind immediately, that can be difficult. Um, but just doing some low grade exercise or um, you know, maybe some lower impact, but overall, um, implementing exercise into your daily regimen is going to allow you um, to ha just have an overall healthier body system and allow you to be more tired and relax in the evening. So it's important for us to know those were some tips for you as far as um, doing what you need to do, making changes and provisions so that you're able to sleep and rest better, which overall was going to help your overall body health, longevity, and just overall wellness. Um, again, please keep in mind, if you're having any issues, pain, chronic pain, that can make sleeping difficult. Um, if you've had surgery and you're having a hard time getting back into a resting regimen, um, feel free to contact us at Rehab Associates as we would like you to, um, or like to help you rather in that healing process. But until then, you know, do what you need to do to have a restful night's sleep and sweet dreams.